On today's podcast, Chris portrays his beloved Watford. We react to some amazing breaking news and why Idris Elba may potentially be starring in Cats 2. Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch, the notorious SID to my left and uh, Chris Stark to my right. Um, big week. It's the Friday pod. Mm. Squeaky bum time. Yeah. Some bottles are falling out. Oh. <laughs> Left, right and centre. My bottle's falling out. <laughs> Has it fallen out? <laughs> Has it? I can't tell you how pissed off I was over last weekend. Yeah. Massive. So you played your Paddy Power Boost, oh, right? Yeah. And you had the, the draw, right? One all, did you have? Uh, okay, so for Luton yeah. Bournemouth. Luton Bournemouth, you had one all. Yeah. That was a six-pointer for you. 90th minute. Look, the Paddy Power boost gets us double points, mm. right? So I stood to get an exact prediction because I predicted one all. Mm. And I was at the Watford game that time. I was watching Watford against Preston North End and it was such a terrible game. It It really was. So I was kind of annoyed about that. But then I became very interested in that it was one all because Luton were down first. Bournemouth went up, mm. and I turn around to my mate and say, "This is a horrible position because I'm sat in Vicarage Road. This is a terrible thing to say as a Watford fan." But I was almost willing Luton to score to get to one all. They got to one all, and obviously I don't really want them to win. I'm not fussed about that. Ooh. But they got to one all, and I thought, "Oh my god, I'm going to get six points on this." Double points because of the Paddy Power boost. It's huge as yeah, well. And then what was it? 91st minute? Mm. Yeah, but that, that, that minute, gave me the like correct that. score. So that gives me three oh. points. So instead of you being six ahead of me, I've got three. It's basically a nine point shift. Mm. I mean... <laughs> oh, against, <laughs> against your enemy. I was Luton. so pissed off. I put a load of stuff in our WhatsApp group. I was really annoyed. And then uh, and next thing, quite I had a quick look on now, Twitter. You? <laughs> Noticed you're quite aggressive in it there on, on the weekends. <laughs> it was. Because I've had to deal with these forfeits, like, and I, no, I really don't want. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, um, so, so I was really annoyed, and then I got, had a quick look on Twitter, and I saw that you were basically doing victory laps on Twitter. Yeah, saw something I can't remember where it was been written, so I turned Twitter off for the day. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, I well, think I... there was, I think there was bottle everywhere. Yeah, on Twitter bottles have gone. Where were you? Were you at a football match? <laughs> no, I remember where I was. I think I was at home. Bastard. Yeah. <laughs> But Colton Morris, obviously, you know there's certain players that obviously Colton Morris has scored in the 90th minute. There's certain players that kind of get you out of jail or... Mm. I remember having a big bet once on Man United and it was there at home to Sunderland. I always remember it. Vidic. Vidic had a head up. It was saved. I think Carrick came out and scored. Just little goals like that where you're like, I needed that so much. Mm. And you remember them forever. You know, certain horses that go down or jockeys that let you down. Mm. You know, that, for me... Carlton Morris will forever remain one of my favourites. Yeah. Because yeah. of that moment. Well, I mean, considering that you, you bigged up your, your Paddy Power boost after we'd had a, a nightmare, wasn't it, the weekend mm. before? We pick up two points, was it? I think, Max, I think, I think, I think you got two it. points. So out of, out of all of us using our Paddy Power, Paddy Power boost, out of 54 points, we've collected five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the integrity of the pod is 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 in question, in question but, but having uh, said that no matter how shit your league is if everyone's tight at the top it's exciting uh, yeah. <laughs> right and, yeah. and the way it is now chris 14 sid's 14 crouchy 14 points um it's basically like arsenal Man uh, manchester city and liverpool um, it's that time. Yeah. And not everyone else has faded away. <laughs> I think I'm Liverpool, though. That's my worry. <laughs> Who would you say I, you are in this scenario? You're I Liverpool. Think, I think I'm Liverpool because oh. I was way ahead, wasn't I? It was mine to lose. And just all of a sudden, it's not that I'm losing, it's just yeah. all of a sudden, a mm. couple of iffy results. Do you think so that must make Sid's Manchester City I am then? one million percent Man City. Yeah, because <laughs> he won got, it last year. I've got the experience, I've got the artillery, you know, I just it's just waiting to explode. Yeah. Okay, so that makes me Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Oh. <laughs> oh. Their bottle's going to go again. <laughs> <laughs> you could be in trouble. Oh, my God. Okay, all right. Well, that's where we are. Yeah, but are you happy with the teams you've got? Who would you rather be? Um... I think it's anyone's. I don't know if you can just be disappointed. I don't want to be Liverpool right now. You don't want to be? No. One big weekend here. Changes every week, yeah. though. Uh, th no, it won't do. I think if you if someone, if someone one of us can get one big weekend in, 
and that just means maybe a four pointer that's enough to keep your arms bay. In fact, can I take that back? I do want to be Liverpool because I've just realised this podcast comes out the day that I'll be DJing Aintree. Okay. In oh. Liverpool, obviously Liverpool. Yeah. So okay. I very much want to be Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually like thrilled to represent. When you're in, you're in. <laughs> I like thinking. <laughs> Got to be careful with these things. You, you certainly know? do. Bad timing. You certainly do. Um, Okay, so big games coming up this weekend. Obviously, at the time of recording, um, there's Champions League games to be played. Um, but we're going to look ahead to three games this weekend and focus in on them. That said, there was quite a bit to talk about from last weekend's football. Uh, yeah, obviously, the biggest game of the, of, the, of the weekend was Man United versus Liverpool. Quite wasteful Liverpool, weren't they? Some great um, great goals from United, first though. First half. I've never seen a more one-sided first half. Yeah, yeah. 15, huh? 15 shots to zero. Mad. And then all of a sudden, Bruno Fernandes goes and finishes like like he did. Mm. And there's an unbelievable second goal as well for yeah. me. Like, so it's just clinical, I suppose, and, and Liverpool wasteful, um, which is frustrating because, you know, Liverpool could have gone, what, two points clear? Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, that, it's getting to that stage now, isn't it? Between, as you said, between them top three, that it's going to be so tight. It's, um, Would you say this is the best title race of all time? Uh, of all time, I think it depends. Yeah, I think if you're looking at it being a three or so, any like you know, it's not before it'd be Chelsea United or it is anyone. Is it? It, this it is it is literally anyone's, yeah, it's, anyone's, it's, and it's, Arsenal it's got a great sad. stake for this. They really have. Everyone's writing them off and you know putting them outside, but it could be anyone. Huh? Well, listen, I, 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 there's something about like. The fact that I've been called Arsenal now <laughs> kind of makes me... <laughs> you think you want to do it? Makes me half want to back them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah come on, Liverpool. <laughs> What's I, happened to I us? Think, <laughs> I think City do it. It just matters no, more, doesn't it, when there's four foots yeah. involved. Uh, All right. Yeah, it was... Uh, that game was... That, that game was... That game, the, I'll tell you what game disappointed me, Chelsea. Like, I thought on my predictions, I said 1-0 to 9. I thought it was going to be a tight game, but... Chelsea away at Sheffield United. What do you think of Pochettino's um, comments saying they're not mature enough to be competing every three days? Oh, do, you, do you think it was savvy? Like, that, that's where some of the talk has been in that. I mean, he obviously knows what he's doing by saying these sort of things. That's been that's been their model, hasn't it? You know, with, with buying young. So it, that's going to be the excuse. You know, how do they develop? Do they develop in time um, as a group, individually? Are they mature enough? That, that was always going to play a theme and that feels like that's his excuse at the time. I think he's right. You know, look at that dressing room. And the, the, well, they're, well, they're probably not, but they've gone down that route, haven't they? They've bought them, like, that, that's been the, the, listen, the I agree. recruitment I, listen, model. Listen, I still think they should go to Sheffield United away and beat them, but is there enough experience in that team to win ugly at Sheffield United, like a 1-0 win, yeah. like I predicted? No, they shit it and uh, drew 2-2, two, two, so. Yeah. Yeah, and also, we touch on the news at the time of recording, right? This is very new, very yeah. early at the time of recording. Um, is uh, Amarim at uh, Sporting has been announced as potentially the new Liverpool manager. Um, I think the clubs have agreed, right? Yeah. It just feels like this whole um, managerial thing, because he's announced so early, it feels feels a bit like the Bond job, doesn't it? Like the next James Bond. I feel like we're just constantly hearing different the, names. The next and... Bond, yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're well, always hearing about that. <laughs> Well, I, you see, I just assumed Alonso. I, I'm aware that he's ruled it out, and but I just assumed this was the perfect time. I, perfect I, I agree with you, mate. I don't, I don't know what because I think you've got to take these opportunities when you can, be it Bayern or or Liverpool. I obviously he must have his reasons, and you know loyalty to to the club that's kind of really helped him put it on the map might be one of them. You know what I mean? He's a man yeah. of kind of honour, but. You know, I just think he's got the opportunity there to go to one of these massive clubs. It might not come around again. Like, do you think? This... A bit, but do you think a bit of separation is maybe a good thing for a new manager to come into Liverpool? That's, That's what I mean. It's, it's probably less is it less pressure than Alonso. Um, I just think whoever follows Klopp is what a job. What a job you've got on your hands. I mean, is that what's scaring people off? Like, is it that one after Alex, Alex Ferguson? They didn't want to be the mm. next one in. I think with this one here, I mean, I don't know too much about the new manager. I'm assuming it's he fits the model, the way that Liverpool play, because that, that's mm. the way that they're going down now. It's not about getting a manager in and then go to his style. It's about, right, this is how we, this is our style, this is Liverpool Football Club. You know, you're going to buy in. But we don't us. have Alonso in it and it go wrong. Do, do you see what I mean? Like, there's an idealistic view on Alonso joining. It's a bit like if you're 
uh, let's say like one of your mates has enough money or something like that to go and buy your favourite pub. And it's a bit like, in a way, you'd rather have a landlord that you don't... Because your mates can start pissing around with it. Things could turn against them. Do you reckon, the food yeah. changes, that kind of... Do you know what I mean? Mm. It turns into one of those pubs that you're not allowed to have your phone out at. <laughs> that sort of thing. Like, Do you know what I mean? In the end, you end up not going there. Yeah, and you turn against your mate. And you yeah. don't want that with Alonso, yeah, mate. You don't yeah. <laughs> no, we don't want <laughs> that. That's why I'm looking at that actually. But then again, on the on the other side of that is, I I think you you know these opportunities. I just think sometimes they might we might not be there again. Mm. I, I think you just got to. You don't want to sit there at the end of your career and go, wish I'd have taken that Liverpool job. You know, I wish I'd have had a go at Bayern Munich. You might stay at Leverkusen. Things might go wrong. Football changes very quickly. It's same with Idris Elba and Bond. Yeah, you know, mm. you know exactly it's right. You know, call. if he could be doing Cats too next year. <laughs> Hi, Peter Crouch of that Peter Crouch podcast. Uh, we called to arms last time. We asked you to subscribe. Plenty of you did subscribe, but of course we need more. Uh, we'd love you to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoy our content, if you enjoy the podcast. It really does help. All right, should we jump into the games, guys? Let's go for it. Uh, okay, it. the next part of the podcast is supported by Paddy Power. It's their big, big weekend fixture. We've had Paddy Power boosts. Um, last week, Pete, Sid, mm. um, you know, potentially we've, we have we had it, didn't we? And obviously yeah. you've done one last week. Didn't have great success doing them, to be quite honest. We still have the, the Paddy Power Boost uh, phone a friend. Mm. And then we, still, we still also have Paddy's predictor, uh, one of Paddy's expert traders on the prediction. Mm. Um, so we still have those in our locker. Well, let's see how we go. Um, this is the big week in fixture. This is Arsenal versus Aston Villa. Yeah. Um, thoughts please gentlemen we've got Arsenal at 1-4 to four on to win uh, Villa are 17-2 to two to win away from home so a tenner on Arsenal gets you £12.50 return I mean they are strong favourites in this mm, match strong favorites, having said yeah. that Villa are, are a good side you know and, and, and they could if you look at a Villa to sneak a 1-0 win you can get 25-1 to one. yeah um, can, you can't Villa have, you can't just talk, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you can't just talk about the top of the table can you I mean Villa are playing for something it's massive thing as with, well. With, you with know? Spurs. They're playing for fourth, yeah, fourth. For fourth, yeah. Well, I yeah. See, if we don't get the fifth Champions League spot, right? Yeah. That is as big a um, yes. like race yeah. for fourth. Yeah, it's just as big as the top race. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it is. in some ways you kind of half want it not because you want it to go to the wife. They both get it. They're so far ahead of the other teams. Yeah. you feel like you know you half want another battle there mm. and then a relegation battle. Yeah. Uh, just because, just for the good of the league, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd love to see both of those clubs in the Champions League. Two great clubs, two clubs I've played for. But for the sake of the league, it'd be great to, to go right to the wire oh, um, yeah. and, and, and have a game right at the end of the season to see who gets fourth. It's normally an exciting game. Mm. Normally a winner. No draw between the clubs in the Premier League since 2012. Really? That's incredible. That is a big wow, start. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Arsenal's home record this year has been frightening. Very, very good. Villa's away form had been poor, but they've picked up of late. They've been scoring goals away from home. Um, Got some stats for you as well. Goals are likely. Uh, Arsenal top scorers in the league. Villa fifth top goal scorers in the league. Defensively, they're very good, aren't they, Arsenal, though? Well, I it's, a big, it's a big game for Watkins, isn't it? Because you, you're, you're looking at it going, all oh, the whoever's playing up front on, on the day. Uh, that's where you want your, your top players. This time of the season mm. now is defining moments, isn't it? Like if Arsenal go and win this, again, depends what time kickoffs are with the other the other top teams, puts a bit of pressure on them. Villa, if they go and get a result there, it shows them, you know, top four. The big, big players just start to step up on these occasions. And <sighs> I don't mm. worry about Arsenal going forward ever, right? But like defensively... Um, you know, they've just been so solid. Like, they don't look like they're going to concede. They don't. And that that then bears a weight on, they don't have to score many goals. That's if they're, me, it's like the Arsenal of old, they can just win 1-0. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Not like they have to go and smash teams 3-4. and four. They can just know that they're defensively sound and they'll get a goal. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Goals in this one. Um, who wants to go first? Um, <laughs> if 
I wrote down. I think me and Crouchy have both done the sneaky. We've got, like, we got to see that. Hold on a minute. Look at Sid. I'm looking at Sid's score as I've well. I've got Arsenal 3 1. Yeah, we I've, all have. I've gone Arsenal 3 have 1. We really? yeah. Okay. yeah. We've all got 3 1. Which okay. means it's definitely not going to be 3 1. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to change mine then. Because I don't like going the same. No, if you are. I'm going to go Arsenal 2 0. You stick on 3 1. Oh, what are you can do 2 1. Okay, four, I've gone 4-1. Four, four, one. Wow. Statement. Well, I wanted three. No, I but think, you can have three. I think they're full of... Do you want two one? I've gone four one now. I wrote down. You have All three right. one. All right. I'll All right. change if either of ours are the same again in the next one. All right, then. Um, or to correct at time recording, please gamble responsibly. Let's fire straight into uh, Newcastle versus Tottenham. I think this will be a great game, this. Mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to this. Mm. Goals. Just see goals in this. Yeah. Like, just literally re- looking at the last few games here. Tottenham 4-1 against Newcastle. Newcastle 6-1. To- uh, Newcastle 2-1. Tottenham 5-1. Spurs 3-2 against Newcastle 2021. Goals all over the place in this one. Uh, this is, again, top four battle, isn't it, for Spurs? It's a big one. Yeah, no, it is for them. Yeah, I think Newcastle are eighth at the moment. Uh, just two behind, points behind Manchester United and one behind West Ham are sixth and seventh. So, they, you know, it feels like there's it's a kind of race for sixth almost. You know, I think they're too far away, Villa and Spurs, to get caught. Yeah. Um, but Newcastle look like they, I think they could probably finish sixth um, ahead of Manchester United. I think it would be between those two. Mm. Uh, love Isaac at the moment scored five in his last five mm. um, playing out of his skin love him as a footballer at home so many goals as well yeah. last five games 14 goals mm. Mm. at home yeah here's one for you Spurs have won just one of their last six away games wow okay once uh, on the road in six so we're thinking we're thinking goals. We're thinking that's goals, that's yeah. the headline. I'm here, thinking goals. Yeah, that's that's goals. Goals. <laughs> what I've got. Uh, Newcastle two, Tottenham three. Oh. Three two to Tottenham. I've gone. I think it's been a ding dong battle. I almost went four three. Did you? But I thought, I, I've got more of a sniff of three two. Do you know we've had so many exciting games recently? That's the other thing we can't underline. Like we're having amazing football matches. Yeah, yeah, there's lot, I know lot. that sounds mad to say, but at least one a week has been. A proper exciting, no, it's been yeah. some cracking games. Can really I can good. I just throw a little bit of sugar on this one? Yeah. Yes, please. Should we should we do our should we do our scores first? Got it. You you gone three two. Yeah, three yeah. two Tottenham. Right, I'm gonna go three one Tottenham. Okay, I've gone two all, two two. Okay, can I just say if we can introduce if if we predict the last scorer of the game. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I'm not doing what, this. What, why do you want that? Well, no, just what to what you angle some... have you got? Well, no, <laughs> it's true. There's no angle. Well, when did you dream this up? I just, literally just then. <laughs> I just thought let's just make this a little bit no, spicy. We can't, there's too many rules. Why coming. not? It's, only no, one, it's, one it's game. a simple game. It's You're like last... one of those who wants blueies. <laughs> like just calm down. <laughs> You're like one of those who wants blueies. Look, I'm just saying this, right? Look, it, this is going to just coincide with Paddy Power as well. You predict your last scorer all right, of the match, okay? If that person gets taken off and the sub comes on and scores, <laughs> it takes oh, place. Right. Okay, all right. You're trying to lean into Crouchy's super sub. So thing. you can pick, yeah, are go. you saying in the Newcastle Tottenham game yeah. fixture, just pick who you, you think, can pick a goal it's just scorer? just an added stress. And what do you get if you get the right goal scorer? I think for the golf score, it should be five points. No, no. <laughs> this is can't mental. Be. Can't We're not, be. So you're making one each point, game worth three, like... Point. So if you get the correct score and the goal score, you get eight points. No, you've lost your head. Oh, you've gone mad. I think he's trying to, I think he's trying to get a roll in UEFA. Yeah. <laughs> you're overcomplicating the beautiful game. Has, has someone given you a little... No. Yeah. Bag yeah. of gold or something. Got, like, things I happen. literally, I just thought, it's, it's quite, I think there's going to be goals in that and it just it adds a little bit of thing on, not the first goal scorer, the last this goal one, scorer. This one game. All right. All right, I'll have some. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why we're doing this. This is like, two when points, I was, when I was points. quite angry at Vicarage Road the other day, I deleted it on WhatsApp because I suddenly thought, actually, fuck, it's going to be one all. This is amazing. I offered you at something like 60 minutes. I said, can I cash out now for four mm. points? Mm. And no one obviously read the message because you've got better things to do with your Saturdays. <laughs> um, I was firmly online straight after when the goal went in. Firmly were. online for a long time. 
You're not back it. Well, you're in charge. I, I, I don't think I can back this. <laughs> oh. I, I think I could back it for one point, one game, Why are we doing once. This? Well, I don't agree with that game being the one then. Why not? Okay, let's agree. Because on I'm a playing point. for. I've gone for a draw. I'm playing for a. I'm playing for a situation which won't have a last minute screamer. <laughs> the, the, the last minute, the last goal, could, the two two could come in the first half. Could be like all goals over. Also, it could be two one in the last minute and be two two. Yeah. The last doesn't have to win it, does it? All right, let's leave it. Uh, Let's leave it. Well, no, I don't want you to be annoyed. No, 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 no I'm good. If it, it, he is it, upset. No, no, I'm You're not. pissed off, I can tell. No, 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 genuinely, I'm not. I genuinely, I'm just trying to add a bit of spice. If it was to be, I'd go um, Isak, but that's fine. All right, yeah. let's do it. Let's right. do it. You just Fuck crumbled it. there massively. <laughs> He's give you the Sidwell eyes there, and you absolutely, your bottles fell out. <laughs> no, I just... I, who are you going to go for? <laughs> I'm going for I'm going for Son. I'll let you have the next pick. You can you can have Isak. I'm going to go Isak as well. Okay, all right. No, I'm going to go both. We'll both go Isak. No, no, no. I'll go for Gordon. And well, then I'll go Gordon. <laughs> I'm going to man mark you. <laughs> I think this just should be one point. All right, this okay. is a one point. Let's do oh, one point. Right. Fucking hell! It shouldn't be bigger than the want? game. No, <laughs> no, it shouldn't. <laughs> right, it's one point. All right, okay. who do you want? Isak, please. Okay. I'll, I'll go Gordon. <laughs> so it's all, all different. I'll have Son. But they have yeah. to score the last goal. Yeah, the, the last, last goal. goal. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Right, so just to clarify the rules, okay. <laughs> I want to say they're the Paddy Power rules, but they're actually not. They're nothing to do with them. I think they're going to distance themselves from this. <laughs> this is the Steve Sidwell bonus. <laughs> it's called the Steve Sidwell bonus point, And it is the last goal scorer in the Newcastle Tottenham game. Steve Sidwell, the notorious, has gone for Anthony Gordon. Chris Stark has yeah. gone for Alexander Isak yeah. and Peter Crouch has gone for uh, Human Son. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, third game, should we just, this will just be normal, will yeah, it? Yeah, this is just normal. So three points yeah. if you get the yeah. correct score. One just point straight, one. Straight if you normal. get the right, win, lose, draw. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Is back. We've got not the Forest versus Wolves. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Wood in good form. Um, mm. he's, it's, what is it, 12 times a season? Four in his last four. I played with Chris Wood, you know. I always said he's a good finisher. Yeah. Had a difficult time at, at Newcastle. Um, I've always liked him as a player. Played with him at Burnley. Played some shrimps. Trim. Knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Good player, mate. Box. Really good player. Um, I, I still, I think this is a stalemate. I've gone for a 1-1 one, one draw. Yeah. I like me that. Oh, okay. I didn't realise this. Forrest have not conceded more than one goal in a game in five of their last six. I don't no. know why I didn't expect that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's because I suppose they're down there, aren't they? Mm. Uh, uh Okay, I've gone. I've gone quite low scoring on this as well. I've gone Wolves one, Nottingham Forest nil. Oh, all different then. Okay, I've got. I've gone for a two-one Wolves win. So we've all backed. Well, yeah, yeah. We backed Wolves. One draw and two one Wolves. Draw. Okay, no one fancies Forest, even though they're at home. I don't fancy Forest at home. No, even though last time I did back West Ham to beat Forest away from home and West, and Forest Dunham, but I'm gonna go for Wolves. All right, we've got a couple of messages. Yeah, we've got messages here. Yeah, obviously, they're loving the shirts. Um, this one's from Molly. says, hey, loving the pos podcast. Uh, who had Paris Hilton down as a Blackburn fan? Uh, keep up the great work. He's got a picture of Paris Hilton here um, with a Blackburn home and away shirt on the hangers. Is that her? It's Paris Hilton. Oh, right. It's almost like she's posing in the mirror with, with them to kind of go, which one should I wear? It kind of like looks mm. in a dark room and... I, I don't know. It's something sinister about it. Her eyes are off camera as if like, fucking please help. Yeah. So, you know, so, so it's like holding... someone's locked her in the club shop. Mm. <laughs> she's holding two kits in a picture that's been framed, that's been held by someone with great fingernails. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Sid, you missed this because you were on holiday last Friday. We yeah. were talking about celebrity I fans. Heard. Oh, listen. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll did you listen? That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Margot Robbie? Yeah, apparently a Fulham fan. Yeah, but this is... Do you remember when we, put, when we had a chat, obviously, a long time ago, and we said, who would we ideally want to come on the pod and mm. put some names down? If you go back to the messages, mine was Margot Robbie. I oh, was it? Yeah. 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 The crowd, she laughed. Yeah, yeah. And I said, we can make this happen. That would be great. Margot if Robbie, get Margot yeah. Robbie on. Yeah, fantastic. Did you, do you, you honestly didn't know that she was a Fulham fan? I, I might have seen it. To be honest, I forgot. But but you what I liked the about the Margot Robbie Fulham one is that it sort of matches. Yeah. You know when the right celebrity kind of matches. Mm. So um Tom Skinner, you know, Bosch. Yeah. And West Ham. Yeah. 
just yeah. sort of matches. Ray right. Winston, West Ham works. Mm. Ray Winston, uh, yeah, Tom yeah. Hanks, Aston Villa. Yeah. Mm. Obviously works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's just something right about it. Yeah. And we were also talking about how some celebrities, they kind of, they're a little bit loose with the clubs. They just support a number of British clubs. Um, Snoop. Sadly, Snoop is one of those yeah. people Snoop. as well. And we, so we don't know the story with Paris Hilton here, whether she is a genuine Blackburn fan or if she's just, uh, it's a clout thing. Okay, well, it's... Mm. We don't know. I don't, I mean, listen, I don't, what's she doing in Blackburn out. if she is in Blackburn? Uh, she looks like she's in a Blackburn club shop. Have you have you been in a football club shop recently? I've, went, I've been in Tottenham's mega store fuck me how much stuff is in there Lots like stuff, yeah. i swear down there's like some strange branded thing i never realized there was that much mm, like egg holders mate is everything everything you could want for your house egg holders <laughs> there, there probably yeah. is, yeah, there is there's, there's, yeah. there's everything yeah in the watford shop it's it's insane some of the stuff in there it's <laughs> yeah. i want it all but it's uh it's getting mad all right, another message. Hello, Pete, Chris and Notorious. Listen to your pod all the time. In the previous one, you wanted to sh uh, photos of signing the book when getting married. So I've delivered. Something that might shock you and give you a laugh. Uh, myself and best man are Chelsea fans. I got married on the 19th of December last year, the day of the, um, mm. the EFL Cup quarterfinal versus Newcastle. We got married on a country estate in the middle of nowhere with no network coverage. But all I could think about is the football. And I managed to find the estate owner after the speeches. And she gave me the Wi-Fi for the estate. Next thing you know, at one single table in the middle of the room, me and my best man are surrounded by guests. We're watching the Chelsea game. And it was extra time after about 10 minutes, my bride clocked uh, me, me and game over and saw I was watching the game at our wedding. My response was, it's a penalty shootout now. I can't not watch this. Shockingly, she was fine about it. And at that moment, I definitely knew I married a good one, letting yeah. me watch my team at our wedding. Long-winded email, but I thought you might need uh, have a laugh reading it. All the best lads, keep it up. Kind regards, Joshua. Mm. And there's a picture of him signing um, the wedding. Can we just have a moment of silence, please, for people that have booked weddings for this summer mm. but didn't think about the Euros and are going to have this problem? I'm mm. willing to bet there are people right now that don't realise the mistake they've made mm. or that their best mate has made. Can I just say, the World Cup final, we, we, I renewed my vows uh, abroad recently, 10-year wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Not that, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know what, it, what that even is. I think it's just but, like renewing a contract, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think it's, just, it's, it's something to celebrate. <laughs> contract renewal. 10 years together, let's celebrate, you know. It's like a testimonial, mm. I suppose. 10 years at a club, mm. you know. Um, you know, you celebrate it. So that's what we did, me and Av. But it, we booked it for the World Cup final day. Yeah. So uh, I just moved it. You moved, yeah, you moved, moved it, the... yeah, day after. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Did you uh, explain to her why you were moving? I said, it's a World Cup final. I said, no one, no one who likes football is going to want to do that. And she was like, you're right. And to, to be fair to her, I was totally fine with it. Oh, that's yeah. great. Mm. Keep her. How do you think if, um, like, what, what should we say for the Euros? What can people do? Is it better to just be honest? Like, if you have fucked up and you've booked your wedding Same as what Euros, I, you know, as mm. I did there, I know it's different to maybe you're booking a wedding. It's probably, it was only, you know, a handful of family and friends that went to that one. It's probably, obviously, more so with the, with the wedding. But I think, I think you could just be honest and say, just oh, such, a, such, a, such a massive game for England that day. Mm. I, think, I think it's actually really selfish of a couple to have a <laughs> wedding on say an England game and fair player you've got to put these things so far in advance it's not it's not your fault that that's happened mm. but I think it's really selfish if you don't then cater for the audience it's, a match is 90 minutes right might have extra time yeah. you know what I mean you've got you've it's free got, entertainment for it fun just time. I just think it's you know you could, you could have a great time after mm. you can watch I think you should cater for it you should have a room where everyone can go for a little bit I think if you're going to cater for vegans, you can cater for football fans, oh can't you? Oh my God, it's, you know, the amount of dietary requirements yeah. these days. Mm. You what know. about my football requirements? And... But could you imagine if you had your wedding day on the same day as the World Cup final, the European Cup final, and England won it on your wedding day? That's uh, the best. Oh, I mean, the best day ever. It would go off. Yeah. But that's what I mean, a group game, you can't really go wrong, can you? I mean, no. like, if at first glance you go, shit, there's an England group game on my wedding day first it, but it's only going to add to the party mm. everyone's going to watch anyway and also you don't want your wedding photos and videos spoiled by people just crowding around phones yeah you're better to just go this couple up. were awesome they 
put on screens, they you know, in a room next door or something. Like, it's better to go bigger with it, I think. Well, so, so they've all those stupid questions at the start of every meal. Like, you know, any allergies, any yeah. special dietary requirements? <laughs> any football requirements? <laughs> yeah. Any football you want to watch? on, please. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. The only thing is it's got potential to be like Box Park, isn't it? Where if the goal scored, it just all, all the drinks come up off the table. Oh, yeah. Hey, maybe that's what we do. Maybe maybe we could do something good. Like if, because there is an expense in this as well. Maybe there is something in us helping out. You know, if if sadly a big football match has fallen on an important date for you, maybe we can step in and call in some favours and just mm. get it properly sorted for you. <laughs> that, that, I like that. Yeah. So we're going to say we're going to save people's I just like, think like if you're going to do days. it do it right like so that you can turn around to your family and go look I've, I've messed up I've, 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 we've booked an event on a very important day but don't worry the Crouchy Bob are going to sort it. Mm. I'm, I'm all in. Sounds good alright. Yeah. We, we, we can help you get in touch. Yeah. Um, Alright last message here uh, got a challenge for Susie Dent how come football commentary is the only place the word Remonstrating is used. <laughs> Clive true. Tilsley does it all the time. Surely I'm not the only one to have noticed this. Love Steve, Wednesday fan and semi pro pod passer from New Zealand. Wow. Uh, yeah, I like that. Yes, remonstrating. You only remonstrate with refs. No one's yeah. ever remonstrated with a with a traffic warden. Yeah. And now you're you saying it, I can only hear Clive Tilsley saying that as well now. Mm -hmm. So if if you're getting booked on a yellow line, you no one's you never go, go oh, look at the he's remonstrating with the with the with the parking attendant mm. you only say he's remonstrating with the ref it's it? true it's a classic Clive yeah. phrase and I guess we do need to understand from Susie herself what the word means alright well hopefully we can get Susie to do that potentially next week yeah, we uh, find out her. why the word remonstrating is only in football what have we got this week she's got one this week uh, we have got a uh, message from Susie yeah I don't yeah. know what it is should we play it play it yeah Hi team. Well, this week's word or expression of the week is something that was on your list. It's a hat trick. Uh, hat tr and it's a lovely story, in fact, because the first meaning of a hat trick was a really literal one. It was a magic trick in which the magician produced something from an empty hat. It's related, of course, to the expression pulling a rabbit out of a hat. So this was in the middle of the 19th century. And a couple of decades later, you get a hat trick starting to mean the feet in cricket by a bowler of taking three wickets with three successive balls. By the 1890s, it had extended to a set of um, three wins, three goals or other successes achieved in a single competition. And that includes, of course, football. But where did it all begin? If you go to Sheffield and some of its oldest winding streets, you'll find a slice of cricketing history. There's an area known as Hyde Park, which at its peak boasted mm. nearly six acres of fields. W.G. Gray's played there, but most importantly, it was the birthplace of the hat trick. Worth saying that test hat tricks are as rare as hen's teeth. And the honour for one of the most memorable and the first recorded was by Heathfield Harmon Stevenson, a seam bowler for Surrey, who took three wickets and three balls for an All England 11 against the local team Hallam. Um, everyone was so amazed they had a whip round, put the collections in a hat, and gave it to Stevenson. Other accounts suggest that maybe he was given the hat and uh, and that was that but the rest well is history um and just to add one of my all-time favorite facts which is um a hat trick in french is a coup de chapeau which kind of makes sense but in japan i have discovered it is called wait for it a hato toriku i just that makes me stupidly happy um, anyway, that is the hat trick. That's how it all began with a man called Heathfield Harmon Stevenson. There you go. Brilliant, isn't it? From Hato Leeds. Tariko. Hati Tariko. <laughs> it's possibly the first time that um, Susie Dent has done a description that doesn't involve arses or guts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somehow always ends up back to that, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 it does. We it was good, the last one, the Daisy Cutter. I really, like that. really good, that one. Yeah, like but that. no, no interesting hat trick because that's that's something that most football fans, I think, listening to this, yeah. probably wouldn't know. So we've mm. we've helped them. Yeah, fun podcast today, guys. Um, quick message from the Minister of Mischief at Paddy Power, who's kind of in charge of the forfeit situation, which I know we don't really want to discuss because mm. we're now all in the running for yeah. it. Uh, but here's the message: Dear Crouchy, Barbecue C, and Notorious. <laughs> It's the return of the Minister of Mischief. 
back to cause you boys some serious grief. Always rhymes, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. The end of the season will be here in a bit, so it's time to get planning for the big four fit. Puddings, Carl's, barbecues <laughs> related it could be. So let's see what the pod listeners suggest to me. I promise to make this the biggest one yet. Embarrassment and humiliation are a very safe bet. Your old pal, the Minister of Mischief. I think it's just a bit of a kind of shot across the bow there. Bit of a threat. I think we should get thinking and then about about one. Like and then we should we should speak to Paddy Power and, and kind of get one in the pipeline because I kind of need to get my head around it now. Mm. It's going to be me. I need I need to know what what it is. I don't need to know how much I'd love it. Needs to squeak. Man. And it's it's going to be big. It is going to be massive. It's worse. Is it? anything, any forfeit's worse for you because you're, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's mm. yeah. going to go bigger. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's one of those where you can't get away from it, isn't it? I was the first ever male cheerleader at the darts, mm. right? Which you made can't, some you can't noise. can't take anything away from that. But crowd cheerleader. <laughs> no, God. <laughs> if it's what could you, you be? Man. I just don't want to be a cheerleader. <laughs> if it's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's national news oh fuck <laughs> anyway All right. have a good weekend lads alright well hopefully we have a big one have a good one lads have a good one